yes, let me welcome the one and only Yogi Extraordinaire, Yerseer Ra Hotep is here. Welcome, Yerseer. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's very nice to be here, and um, I'm excited. That's all I can say. Well, I'm I'm actually I'm going since she called an audible. I'm gonna pass the ball. I'm gonna do an end around and just just give her the ball because um I, and I before you came in for for many black folk raised in the Christian tradition, we were raised to believe that uh, yoga will in in all kinds of chanting and in all kinds of spiritual ways that did not line up with exactly the way it is in that in that book uh, was of the devil. Did you did you come up in that same tradition, sir? I didn't come up in that tradition, but I have experienced that type of um, resistance from a lot of people around me over the years and from various institutions where I've tried to introduce um, yoga into because they have a misunderstanding of what yoga really is. They think of it as a religion. They think of it as Hinduism and things like that. They don't understand that. Real yoga is a system of self-development, and so they're missing out on it. And um, but I've been, I've, been, I've been able to break through some of those barriers because I've tried to explain yoga from a health and wellness perspective, and I talk about how it helps you to manage stress, how it lowers blood pressure, how it helps with um, diabetes, and how it helps people who even have other types of disorders like um, you know um, erectile dysfunction, you know things like that. So um, that helps me to break through those types of um, resistances that we see in people. Well, as I'm going on yoga skills and if y'all are in Chicago, uh, you got to stop by yogaskills.com, yogaskills.com. As a black man, did, were you raised in Chicago? Did you grow was, up in Chicago? I was born and raised in Chicago. I was born four blocks down the street from where I'm sitting at right now in Bronzeville. And that's why I'm at. I'm a Bronzeville person. Bronzeville is the black area of Chicago, the first original black neighborhood of Chicago. It's the only place where black people were able to settle into when they came here, you know, during the, during the Great Migration. So how does a, a young man from from that part of Chicago even get introduced to yoga. I mean, you grow we grew up in an era where there were uh really lovely street gangs, I'm gonna say it because of uh, my Chicago history serves me, you know, block the block, there was th- these communities was propping up, you know, cropping up in, in Chicago. There was I think daily the, the, y'all had some complicated uh people yeah, yeah. uh leading y'all, uh Browns Brownsville. Uh and so how, who introduced you to yoga? Well, you know, um, the first thing before I even got to yoga, um, when I was around 21, I decided I was just going to become a vegetarian. I was going to start eating healthy. I think I was influenced to some degree by Dick Gregory and stuff like that. But on my 21st birthday, you know, I just decided I was going to change my lifestyle and eat and become healthy. And um, I started to learn about meditation and things like that from reading books and things, you know, and then um About a year later, I I was in college at UIC where I was working on my bachelor's degree in political science. And I met a young lady and she um, said she wanted to take me to her yoga class. And I didn't didn't have any interest in yoga. I thought yoga was some kind of weird stuff, you know. And But you had an interest in a young lady. You were like, I'll come. (laughs) You know, well... Not that wasn't even the case, but okay. eventually it became the case. So I got interested in her and I got interested in the yoga. <laughs> I only got interested in yoga because I went to the class. And when I first went there, I was expecting to see like a little Indian man in a little, in a little diaper and stuff. And it was a six foot five brother who was very smooth and stuff. And he could do anything with his body in terms of yoga movements and postures. I was very stiff. But I decided that I wanted to practice yoga because the example that he showed me, his name was Dr. Aza Hapi, and also because when I practiced, when I did the meditation, when I did the relaxation, I felt so good. And I said, this is something I'm going to do for the rest of my life because it's going to help me to maintain my youthfulness. It's going to help me to have longevity. It's going to help me to be productive. And so I, so I spent like eight to 12 hours every day practicing. Wow. So how long ago was that, Yusir? That was close to 50 years ago. Right. 
And the idea that you were this young man who was, you know, maybe you're playing basketball, maybe you're doing that kind of thing. How tall are you, you see? Um, I'm only six, two. <laughs> and the idea that, you know, you're this brother, you're playing basketball, you're doing this thing, and there's this expectation, you're in Brownsville, it, as Professor Hunter said, there's a lot going on. Also, you know, marijuana, junk food, this and that, just the lethargy of it all. And the, and the idea that you just turned this corner and went into this is fascinating. Um, I love that you were talking about you know, your bachelor's in political science and your master's degree in social work at the University of Chicago. And I, I really adore the way that you bring yoga practice into the community, like into the hood, into prisons, into schools, kindergarten, colleges. I mean, this is everything because you're paying it forward and looking back to everybody that's there in your area. To, you know, I, I want you to speak a little bit more about that, you see, or like the way you've been able to influence your community around you in the last 50 years. Well, I'm, you know, the word came to my mind that I'm like a yoga evangelist, right? So I'm trying <laughs> to spread yoga and I'm trying to spread yoga from an African perspective because I do kinetic yoga and myself and my teacher, we were pioneers in developing this idea that the ancient people of Kemet practice yoga, you know, and we've done our own primary research. We learned how to read the Madhu Nature or the hieroglyphs, and we've been able to demonstrate that through documentation that these people were practicing yoga, that they had a, a yoga philosophy that sort of guided their life. And so um, with doing that, we look upon yoga as being one of the tools that we use for our liberation, right? Because um, when we talk about liberation, we talk about political rights, we talk about civil rights and things like that. But, um, <clears throat> you know, we have to put an emphasis on wellness. We have to put an emphasis on overcoming trauma, overcoming stress, how to manage stress, and how to really transcend our consciousness and move our consciousness out of this sort of westernized, um, matrix way of thinking that's been imposed upon us by the system of racism, white supremacy that we inherited to um, colonization and through enslavement. So yoga for us, for comedic yoga, it is, um, you know, you know, it, it's, it's part of our liberation practice, you know, and so that's the way we approach it. And so even, even, even during the um, pandemic, you know, um, during the bright, not I'm right, the king, but um, George Floyd protests, and that you know people were traumatized. People were traumatized during the pandemic, through the um, seeing, seeing um, George Floyd being murdered and seeing other people being murdered on the streets. So we did um, you know online um, workshops and um, classes geared towards overcoming trauma, overcoming racial trauma, you know. And so our program is based upon that. And so we work with people from all ages. We work, you know, we, we've had programs since the since the 80s, working with young children, but really since the 70s. We're working with young kids in after school programs, working with kids in Head Start programs, working with kids in grade school, in high school, in colleges, working with people in prison, um, in in, in um in um what you call it, um group homes you know, mm -hmm. things like that, juvenile detention centers. So we've done all of this type of work and I've sort of been able to meld my work as a social worker with my work as a um, holistic health, you know, um, practitioner and also as a yoga practitioner. So we work with people with mental illness, people with substance abuse issues and, you know, the whole gamut, you know, so- I love um, that you see I've been, because- I've been sort of mesh that together. I love it because when we're talking about yoga, you know, Professor Hunter, sometimes we're thinking about people in the in in the Lululemon pants and they at the little mat on their back and the, you know, but going to Yasir's classes, going to I've been to Kemet with Yasir, I've been to Egypt. Okay, let, let, let's sit with that. Um, yeah. because again, we when I think yoga, I think well, not anymore, because I'm I'm now fully decolonized, but you know, it's downward facing dog. It is to your yeah. Sierra's point, uh, a, a little tiny man in a diaper 
Uh, you know, I did, I did Bikram for a while for the sweating. I love to sweat. Sweating is so powerful to me and some things transform when those, in those poses, but I know that Bikram guy was a little problematic. Uh, but when you take it back to Kemet and we, we look at the hieroglyphs and we look at the meta nature and we see, uh, all of the symbols for you, like, where does it start? And, and for you going to Kemet, doing yoga you did yoga with him doctor dr Amin? absolutely right, walk us through what is it for those of us some some people will be traveling with dr carr and dr uh mario Beatty to to egypt it is not a, a nubian trip it is a trip that they are sponsoring that most a lot of nubians are going on uh-huh. when you went with 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 our yogi um what what was the first thing you experienced can you walk us through it for those of us who may never uh go to kemet and do yoga in in Egypt. Right. Well, you know, I had trained with the Asir before we went there and we've been all over the world uh, on retreat, you know, from Brazil to Jamaica, to Dominica, to other places, to all over the United States, uh, sort of on tour, right? We're on a world tour with my my man, right? (laughs) And so we would be on tour bringing wellness to different cities and places. And so going to Kemet that first time with Yasir, the idea of making the connections, right? Between the, the Sesh Matuna Ter, the, the writings, what people call hieroglyphs, and the fact that these were actually physical poses. They were instructions on wellness. It wasn't just somebody sitting this way, the hands are going backward, someone's in what we would call child pose, right? sometimes or whatever, like these all had names in uh, Metuna Ter in ancient Egyptian language, and they were prescriptions for physical movement. Yasir mm-hmm. drew a total line for me between those things. And I was like, whoa, it was mind blowing. So it was amazing to do yoga at the pyramids uh, in Abu Simbel in the te- at the temples there, like just everywhere we went. It was uh, enlightening and energetic. Like you could feel that our ancestors were, had done that already in those spaces. It was great. And what's the goal? You see her, uh, Rahotep is here. Yogaskills.com is in Chicago. Uh, you can go there and check it out. What would have been the goal 2000 years ago to even be in community? So, cause I guess you could do it alone, but it seems like when you look at what they call hieroglyphs, you see people, right? So being in community, is that important to be together doing it? Um, It's important to a degree, but for me, yoga is a solitary type of a practice. Mm. Uh, I practice yoga, you know, with my students, you know, when people, when I'm traveling, we're doing workshops. And so people do like to do yoga in groups. You know, we do come together together. You know, that's like um, right now we are doing something online. We're doing a challenge called Ma'at Ka, 42 days of Ma'at Ka. And so it's like a challenge. So we got people all over the world doing this one particular sequence of movements and poses, um, you know, every day for the, for 42 days in a row. You know, where do we find? Wait, hold on. Where do we find this? Uh, the series of poses? Um, they, um, there, I posted a video on my, um, website, uh, I'm not on my website, on my YouTube channel, you yeah. know, which and is, then you also have an ebook that's free for people you see here. I, I think, you know, it's good to let folks know that because they can go through those. So professor Hunter, when you were saying that you've been to Bikram yoga and they have a series of poses, mm-hmm. same thing, you know, our ancestors had these series of poses. And one of the things I learned from you here was that. It was in Africa, of course, that things originate. And the ancient Egyptians went on walkabout, right? They go and walk about. And they were going as Dravidians. These are the initial people who populated and brought those sciences, arts, medicine to India. So we see that traveled over. And sometimes people just automatically think yoga, India, but that's not really the case when you when you the deeper you dig the darker it gets right so this is where we go with it i i also saw for myself and yasir is like you're 70 now yasir in october i will <laughs> he's like don't push it um but yasir does handstands headstands total splits i mean 
you name it. And I just think to myself to be 70 and in that condition. And I, and I think I've sent you some photo, but if people go to the website to yoga skills.com, they're going to see that, um, his level of movement and the ability to return that level of flexibility to lots of folks who haven't experienced right. that since childhood. That's one of the things I really, uh, res- regard highly. So, so two things, um, the goal of these movements, when we do them every day for 42 days, uh, Ma'at Kar, uh, what is the goal? What, what is to happen with our bodies, with our spirits? The goal is to enhance your health. We started 42 days of Ma'at Kar on March 1st because we're trying to transition into the, se- into the spring season. And as you transition, you want to, you know, eat eat better. You want to cleanse. You want to maybe fast. You want to maybe go into a cleanse where you clean out your colon, clean out your, yeah. your, your liver and things like yeah, that. Y'all dirty inside. We dirty. Uh, and go <laughs> to uh, go to Calabash tea and get you some <laughs> herbs. Detox. Like that, yes. Detox. All of that. And so, and, and so um, we have documented scientifically that when you do these particular postures that you see on the walls of the temples of Kemet, that they have certain physiological effects upon your body. They lower your blood pressure. They stimulate your digestive system. They stimulate your eliminative system. They allow you to clear your head and to think better. They move energy through your body. They increase your blood circulation. They have a wide variety of specific effects. And also from a meditative perspective, when we meditate, we actually become more in tune with our own ancestors, right? Because one of the goals of Kemetic Yoga is I want to connect. When when my grandmother was alive, she took care of me. When I needed some shoes, some pants, she took care of those things. We are Africans. From an African perspective, we believe that our ancestors still exist on a spiritual level and that we can communicate with them and that they can affect us on an energetic level from the spirit world and and, and, and affect our material condition where we are. And so we try to connect with that idea in our practice of yoga, too. So it is so it so it is both physiological, mm-hmm. physical, wellness based, and it's also spiritual from an African uh, level of spirituality. So the, the full splits that you still do uh, <laughs> going on 70, I just um, I think that's you important. You have to see it. You have I, to I, see no, it. No, I just I, 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 the headstands, the handstands. There's this. There's a pose called the scorpion, where he's like down on his elbows, and the feet are up in the air, and then that they, they are they fold behind him. I'm like, I don't even know. This brother is amazing. And one one of the things, just to let you know, Professor Hunter, part of what I've learned from Yasir over the years, I, I've known Yasir more than 20 years, is uh, I had trouble meditating. I, my mind would just be racing. I know that's hard to believe, but my mind (laughs) would be racing and moving and overthinking. And that might also cause me trouble resting at night, like sleeping. And Yasir was the one who taught me how to meditate. And I grew up in communities where people were meditating. I just couldn't still my mind, but I took his meditation class and he, it was miraculous. Like I was able to calm my mind and get into this other space. So I, I just think, you know, when we have these learned folks in our community, we should tap on their shoulder. And that's why I wanted to introduce you to you and all of the folks here listening and the Nubians, because Yasir will be joining me this Sunday. He, he came on last Sunday and there were so many questions. We could not get through them all. People were were just falling in love with Yasir as we all do. And so this Sunday, folks need to pop into Nubia and go ahead and get those questions ready and find out how to alleviate some of these issues that we have. Like he said, erectile dysfunction. We've got um, you know, cramps and PMS. We've got menopausal issues. We've got joints. Fibroids. 
Yes. Fibroids, flexi- wait, 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 pause. How do you eradicate fibroids through yoga? How, how is that possible? Well, for one thing, you know, we, we deal with the stress issue. We deal with the diet issue. And we also deal with the stimulation of that area of your body through your movements and your posture. Those movements and posture are supposed to massage your internal organs. They're supposed to increase your blood circulation. That's, you know, um, the movements and posture, the practices that we do um, increase your body's ability to have uh, immunity and to fight off, to identify invaders and then to deal with those things. So we have, so, 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 so we have seen Scientifically, you know, we, you know, we, we've done research to show that these, you know, that these practices reduce things like fibroids, erectile dysfunction, um, prostate issues, high blood pressure, so on and so forth, right? And what I'm, one thing I'm going to point out is that even though Dr. Sunyata talks about me doing all these fantastic movements, the movements of kinetic yoga are very precise and very easy to do. Okay. They are. They are. They're accessible. They're accessible. I just like to show out on Yasir and just be like, he's amazing, but they're very accessible. They're reproducible. Um, that same way that, you know, Bikram yoga is, and maybe even in a more accessible way, you're doing it at home. You don't have to pay a bunch of money. And then you're learning the comedic language. You're learning a lot about your history as you're going through. I mean, you see, or you've, I mean, I made a note, like you've taken more than 34 retreats to Kemet, taking people there wow. um, and, and all over the world. And folks are uh, enriched. And we've seen people on retreats, he and I together, where uh, people are having trouble getting pregnant or they're having other kinds of issues. And then a year later, we see them. They're like, look at my new baby. We're like, oh, Oh. Oh, I love it. 